Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, I got a follow-up question. A couple of, maybe a, it was probably our last interview. We were talking about, oh, it was one before that, because we were talking about those who feel that they don't need to be married in God's eyes because they live together, they love each other. What is a piece, piece of paper going to do? They really asked that. Really? They had asked that. So we, you discussed it. Yeah, I thought I had. The follow-up was, well, then... Uh, and it's more in, the, in regards of uh, sex within the confines of marriage. I received a, a follow-up in regards to that saying, well, if God is love and I know we're going to get married and I love my partner, my spouse, my significant other, then it should be permissible to have sex before marriage. Well, I, should have, well, I think what we need to do is just tell God that. <laughs> you know, because my goodness, I, you know, seeing that we know what what should be done, because we know more than God, you know, maybe we should advise him, right? <laughs> you know, God, you said in your word that that it's uh, sex outside of marriage is a sin. You've said that sex outside of marriage is referred to as fornication, and you have said that. That what we're intended to do is we're intended to bring glory to you in our body, which belongs to you in our spirit, uh, and that our bodies are intended to be saved for um, uh, the proper place of expressing sexual um, uh, satisfaction within the confines of marriage. You know, and, and you and your word have said that um, uh, adulterers and fornicators mm -hmm. are going to be judged in Hebrews chapter 13. And you also said in, in Galatians as well as Ephesians, do not be deceived because of these things comes God's judgment. And so when somebody says, well, we love each other and, and God is a God of love, God is also a God of holiness and a God of order and the God who created all things and intends things to be done in a certain way. So anybody who tries to argue as quote unquote a believer, John, is telling me they don't read their Bible, first and foremost. The second thing they're telling me is they don't want to obey those things that they find to be difficult. Three, they're saying that love and lust are pretty much the same thing. And so what we need to do is we need to learn what the difference is between love and lust. Because there are people who say, you know, um, oh, well, I'm in love, therefore we have sex because we're in love. And I heard someone say, no, you're not in love, you're in heat. <laughs> and there's a difference between those two things, and they need to learn the difference. And so, you know, I, uh, anybody, and I don't mean this to be as mean as it sounds, I'm just trying to be honest within the confines of a short conversation. Anybody who approaches uh, me or you or anybody who opens and divides and, and presents the word uh, had better be able to give proof text as to why God has said in his word not to do this, but for you it's okay. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, it's a sin. It's a sin where even in the book of Revelation, the final chapter says outside are fornicators and adulterers. They're outside. They don't come in. Why? Because that sin has caused them to, to not be uh, qualified and able through the blood of Christ, forgiveness of sins, regeneration, all the rest. They're, they're not able to enter into, into the presence of the Lord because their sin has excluded them. So, John, it's a... It's a it's sad that we have people who, who perhaps profess to be Christians and try and say that God's blessing is on them because they have decided that they're in love. Mm. Um, my definition of love comes from the scripture. Their definition of love is not in the scripture. It's in the world. And in the world, which is passing away, there's judgment. So if we're going to be speaking about sex it is something that is confined to the, the uh, marriage bed and it's honorable before the Lord. But he said, but uh, adulterers and fornicate, uh, fornicators will be judged. And so, no, the Word of God says that, that uh, I don't define what relationship is. I ask God for guidance through His Word mm -hmm. to know what is pleasing to Him. And there must be a reason why He in His Word said to avoid it. And I would say that after many years of ministry, John, and you've been serving the Lord for a while now too, how many, how many broken-hearted young women have you seen or, or how many 
defeated young men have you seen who have become uh, in bondage to sexual sin or have become the victims of someone using them for their own purposes and have broken their hearts. One last thing, I still remember this, um, and, and I'll close this because I don't want to go too long discussing this. But many years ago, I had a, a young lady who called, uh, called the office. I was an assisting pastor at the time and asked for an appointment to speak to one of the, the pastors. And so the senior pastor at that day, at that time, said, can you meet with her? And so I set up a, an appointment to meet with this young lady. I was a young man at the time. I was about 29 years old. And she was, uh, I would say, somewhere around 20 or 21. She came into the office. I sat down with her. I spoke to her. And I, it was a weekend. And I asked her a couple of questions. And she had said, I just want to ask you questions about um, sexual uh, things, whether certain things are are right. I, and I said, are you having a relationship? She said, yes. I said, are you married? And she said, no. So I explained to her what scripture said concerning that. And I remember saying something like, uh, uh, you're concerned about this. And she said, yes. I said, where's the young man? Oh, he's playing football with some mm -hmm. of his friends right now. I said, so this young man didn't love you enough to come in and speak to me about this. He left it in your hands, right? And she wow. said, yeah. I said, do you go to church? Because she didn't go to the church I was in. She said, yes, I do. I go to such and so church. I said, have you ever been taught the Bible as it relates to this? Mm -hmm. She says, I've never had a study on this. I said, so you've been raised in the church and nobody ever told you this is wrong? She said, nobody's ever said that to me. I said, well, here's what the scripture says. I opened some passages. I said, this young man that you're with, is he a believer? Well, he kind of says he is. I said, so he's not. She goes, well, not really. I don't think so. But you are. And she said, yes. I said, then you present to him the facts of what Scripture says. I said, you no longer submit yourself to sexual favors for him. And uh, I said, get right with the Lord. I said, and you need to go to a church that teaches the Word of God. That was a conversation we had. And she left crying. She was so brokenhearted. About two years later, I got a, a letter and she wrote, about three years, she wrote and she said this, you may not remember me, but I was that broken-hearted little girl crying in your office. Wow. She said, and when you spoke to me about that, she said, I never, I never um, followed up on this. She says, but I want you to know what happened. She said, after I left the office, I went to him and I broke up with him. Mm. She said, I went to school to become a nurse and in the school I was becoming a nurse in, she said, I got involved in the Christian club. She said, in the Christian club, I became the president. As the president of the Christian club, I met a young man. This young man and I are going to get married, and I would like you to perform wow. our wedding. Wow. And see, there are good things that happen when you, when you repent and do things the way that the Lord has ordered, John. But when we put our will in front of his, there's not going to be a blessing in that. So when somebody says, I'm in love, no, you're not, because love is sacrificial and love serves. And if you're having biblical love, then it's going to be aligned to what God's word says concerning those Amen. things. Amen. And again, that's where the confusion comes in with the love or lust, not understanding the scriptural definition of love. Absolutely. So, well, Pastor, thank you so much. Love means an intense... Siri was giving Siri me some... Siri got saved. <laughs> It was trying to tell me what intense love is. So thank Siri you, Siri. <laughs> Pastor, thank you so much for sharing. And, and I hope this ministers to the one that sent it in and is able to hear and understand that this it's, it's about Jesus and the love of Christ and focusing on that. And so I, I do hope uh, they tune in and hear this. And I want to thank you, Pastor. I want to remind you that we do have our Wednesday evening service tomorrow at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And Pastor, you're taking us through 1 John First chapter John, 5. We're going to be concluding... <coughs> tomorrow and uh, it's it's a, an interesting conclusion and I encourage every person that can be with us especially those who are part of our fellowship yes. to come and it's been amazing to see what God's been doing on Wednesday evenings I'm blessed by that and, uh, and then men we have our, our Super Bowl breakfast on Saturday February 4th uh, we have a limited amount of breakfast burritos you can call the front desk stop by the gazebo if they haven't sold out already uh, but we also have day of, morning of, 
to come here, Anthony Munoz, share his testimony and be with other men in fellowship. And, and so hopefully you guys can make it. Pastor, again, thank you so much for your of time. Course. Hope you guys enjoy this. God bless you. We'll see you soon.